Hello YouTube and welcome back to the first slash second ever episode of my Pokemon Black randomized Nuzlocke and I'm really really excited if you guys are excited then please leave a like and subscribe if you're not already subscribed it really really helps out and um, like I said I left you guys with this screen on the last episode asking you guys to really kindly be able to take a vote for which starter we are going to pick the starters are three grass fire water types as your standard really but um I actually managed to come up with the idea of keeping them themed so all three types are either dual dark types now or dual dark types when they evolve so I thought it'd be kind of nice to match the Pokemon black theme by having dark type starters so um, you guys are all voted the votes are all in and I tell you it was so so close between two and not so close for the, uh, another one um, I was really really surprised at the two that were neck and neck but um, well, I'll just get straight into telling you who won, because you probably really want to know. So swimming quite literally at the bottom of the barrel, it's going to be our poor water type Pokemon Carvana, who barely even scraped over double digits, I think. That's how badly no one really wanted to use it, which is both good and bad for us, because Carvana has got such frail defenses that... Um, we could have probably not lost the Nuzlocke pretty early if we had picked it, so it's probably not that bad of an idea that everyone decided not to pick it. And uh, the one with the second most amounts of votes is going to be Cacnea, and this thing only lost a handle by two votes, so it was very, very close indeed. This thing is probably slightly more defensive than the other two, except for the frailty in its typing, but um, I'm pretty sure it evolves quite early on as well, and um, probably would have got a lot of good moves, but the one who's the reigning champion out of all of these guys is going to be our fire type Houndor who won like I said by a clutch two votes and I was pretty pleased that this guy won because I was really really wanting to use him anyway and um, I'm pretty excited to see what his ability is going to be and what everyone else's abilities are going to be. Um, just in case I do lose to the Carvana or the Catnia which is unlikely, um, the nozzle calls do not actually are not actually enforced and um, we're not actually locked in until we get the Pokeballs from the professor when she teaches us how to catch Pokemon. So we're just going to go straight ahead and chose, choose our starter here who's going to be Houndor and get into this game because I'm so excited and I cannot wait to play. So okay, uh, I'll take this Pokemon. Sharon, that one's yours. Hey, how come you get to pick my Pokemon? Oh, never mind. I wanted this one from the start anyway. Everyone has chosen a Pokemon, so that's it. Hey, I know. Let's have a Pokemon battle. Honestly, Bianca. Even though they're still weak Pokemon, you shouldn't have battles inside the house. Oh, don't be such a worry, Wart. These ones are weak. Like you said, uh, we'll let them battle so they'll get stronger. Uh, it's settled, Lauren. Get ready for a battle. So we're going against Bianca, who's going to be our first um, battle. She's holding... holding? She has got Cacnea, obviously. She's got the weaker one, which is uh, good for us. She's going to send that out right now. We may get a sneaky peek at its ability. Um, so I'm going to lead out with Houndor and his ability is going to be Cloud9 which would have been really useful for us because that is that part of the map of black and white where you have the sandstorm going on. A quick gander at our moveset, we've got Aromatherapy, Switcheroo and Flame Burst. Where on earth Houndor has learned Aromatherapy from I have no idea but it is a randomised Nuzlocke. So Flame Burst is going to come in pretty useful here, it's nice to have a strong um, stab move in a Nuzlocke to lead out with. We're easily going to be able to put that Cacnea in the ground where it belongs because it is indeed a freaking cactus. So that is going to be the end of the uh, Cacnea and we've beat our first battle which is good. We didn't get a level, not quite from there, but um, we got pretty close to getting another level. So the house is going to be a mess. Wow, you're a good trainer and an awesome trainer, no doubt. Uh, Bianca, would you take a look around? Whoa, what happened? Wow, Pokemon are amazing. They're so little but so strong. I'm so glad I get to have a Pokemon. Oh, um, sorry about your room, Lauren. You are completely hopeless. Here, I'll restore your Pokemon for you. So he's gonna somehow have magic Pokemon Center healing powers. It's amazing that you won without using any HP, but you did use up some PP, so he's gonna heal the PP of Handle. And, um, hey, Sharon, how about you battle too? With all that you know, I'm sure you can battle without turning the room into a total disaster like I did. I believe you're right. It'll be no problem for me to keep the room from getting any messier. Besides, it's not fair that you two are the only ones who get to have fun battling. It's decided. You'll be my opponent. 
opponent. You'll be my opponent in our first battle. Let's see what you can do. So we're gonna go against um, Carvana, and like I said, I'm pretty sure that we're not gonna be able to beat this thing because it could have any move under the sun, and um, it's obviously gonna be a water type, and it's pretty freaking scary. So we're gonna send out Houndor, and um, we're gonna go for a flame burst because it's pretty much all we can do. He's actually gonna outspeed us, which is really unfortunate for us. That probably means we've got the suckiest nature ever because we should have outsped him otherwise. He's probably got a speed boosting nature and we've probably got one that negates from it. But um, we are gonna do a pretty nice amount of damage for, with um, a flame burst there anyway. And he's gonna actually have freaking razor shell, which is unfortunately gonna take us out, meaning we will not gain a level from that battle, which is really sucky for us because a level is much needed this early on in the game. This feeling, I'm finally a trainer. On top of that, we better go apologize to your mother about this room. Oh, I better come too. So we're gonna have a gander around my room, which is an absolute mess. But first, we're gonna have a look at what handles ability. If you'd like to pause the game and guess right now what you think the ability is gonna be, then please, I'd be really curious to see if any of you guys get it right. We're running a rash nature as well, which would probably explain our slightly sucky stats. Um, I'm pretty sure that's going to take from special attack and add to special defense. Don't get me if that probably might be wrong. I just did that off the top of my head. Um, so yeah, it looks like boost special attack takes from special defense. And our ability is going to be multi-scale, which is so OP. Tyrno doesn't even have scales, but we've got multiple scales apparently. So that's going to be pretty helpful. That's probably why we survived that water gun at the start um, so well. It would have probably taken us out either way because we're pretty frail. Our defense is 8 and our special defense is only 9. And we are only level 5, so it's not the greatest. But having an ability like multi-scale is going to probably help us out for the Poifu and may even secure the fact that we don't lose Handor early on. Touch wood. Um, so anyway, that's enough shenanigan in a round. And we're going to head up downstairs and go and see what the dudes are doing chilling with my mom. So I'm sorry about all the trouble, ma'am. Well, um, we can clean up. Cleaning up? No worries. I'll, I'll take care of it later. Shouldn't you be on your way to meet Professor Juniper? Yes, thank you. Please excuse us. Come on, let's go thank Professor Juniper. I'll be waiting in front of the Pokemon Research Lab. Oh, wait, I I've got to go home first. Thanks for having us over and letting us destroy your house. So mum's gonna come and pester me for some things. My my Lara, Pokemon battles are so blah blah blah. We'll just kind of speed through all this because I um, don't really want to have to chat all this stuff. She's just gonna give me Pokemon items and heal my Pokemon up for me. She's gonna give us the cross transceiver, which is gonna um, let, I think it's most of the story that comes from that thing, doesn't it? They like call you on it and stuff. So um, she's asking us to thank the professor and we're gonna be off on our way to go and thank professor ourselves so for a second then I only had one eye which is kind of unusual so all these p-dubs are going to be flying away and we are going to um, go and see professor juniper although I'm pretty sure you have to go to what's her name Bianca's house first and her dad is busy saying no no a thousand times no but I'm I'm a good trainer who's got a Pokemon and everything I could totally go on an adventure Oh, it's okay. It's fine. I'll be waiting for you in front of the lab, okay? So her dad certainly seems like a E-class a-hole and doesn't want her to go on an adventure because he's stupid and has no Pokemon. <laughs> so we are gonna go and uh, pump into Sharon here. Okay, let's go meet the professor and we are gonna go and see Professor Juniper and hopefully get all this boring part of the story out of the way so we can start with this Nuzlocke. I am so freaking excited. Hi there, I've been waiting for you young people. Let me introduce myself again. Professor Juniper, we know your name. Whoa, come come Sharon. This is not the time to take things lightly. Today is a day you must remember always so it's best to behave with some formality. That being so, once again my name is Professor Juniper and I am researching when and how the creatures called Pokemon came into existence. It's raining terribly outside, I don't know if you guys can hear that. So maybe that's why it feels as though your Pokemon have already begun to trust you. By the way, would you like to give your Pokemon a nickname? So I've been toying around with the idea for a nickname, I couldn't really think of anything. I kind of wanted to call him Hellhound, but didn't at the same time. 
Um, so I decided that the first ever shiny that I ever wanted to hatch and ever successfully did hatch was a male houndor called um, that I called Blue Star because obviously it was shiny and when you sent it out it, these little stars came around it so I'm just going to call it Blue Star just for hashtag nostalgia reasons and um, I thought it was a pretty cute name so we're going to be rocking the Blue Star name. It's going to take me ages to type these letters in because I was trying to do it without using my mouse because my mouse was, well, I thought if the microphone was recording sound like it should have been, the mouse would be clicking down the microphone so it takes me ages to type words in because I'm doing it like with the thingies. So, um... First Juniper is going to do some stuff and Sharon's going to say stuff about the Pokedex. Pokedex? I am astonished. Nice work, Sharon. You have already studied Pokemon extensively, haven't you? Stupid know-it-all. Still, let me explain everything from the beginning for everyone's sake. The Pokedex is a high-tech device that automatically records the Pokemon you encounter, so I want you three to visit many places and meet all of the Pokemon in the Unova region. This is my request. Lauren, Sharon, Bianca. You'll go on an adventure to complete the Pokedex, will you not? Uh, okay. I mean, yes, Professor. Thank you very much. Because of you, I have become a Pokemon trainer exactly as I've always wished. All of you, thanks. You have given me the best and possible answer. So she's going to give us the Pokedex, and uh, we're going to start being able to catch Pokemon pretty soon. She wants us to go meet her on Route 1, and that is where we are going to be adventuring to ASAP. Since the professor asked us, it's okay to go on an adventure, right? I can explore and maybe find out what I want to do in life. I think I'd like that. Of course, we can travel however we want while completing the Pokedex. So let's hurry on to Route 1. Come, come Lauren, wait up. Oh, there you are. And what did the professor have to say? She asked you to complete the Pokedex? I can't believe it. Well, actually I can. She already, I already knew she was going to ask you. That's why I bought three of you these town maps. Take them with you. So we received the town maps, which is obviously going to be exceedingly helpful, because otherwise we'd never know where we were going. Uh, here you are, Sharon. I'll take care, care of it. And one for you too, Bianca. Thank you so much. As for your room, Lauren, or um, what's left of it, no need for any of you guys to worry. I'll take care of the tidying up. Okay, Lauren? Ah, Pokemon. They are so cute, but have enough power to destroy a whole bedroom. With Pokemon like that at your side, you'll be safe wherever you go. Let you, I'll let your parents know. Hope that in addition to Pokemon, you'll find lots and lots of places that you like in the Unova region and become wonderful ad adults. Have a great trip. If I use the town map, I'll always know where I am. That's certainly helpful. Shall we head to Route 1? The professor is waiting. Uh, let's go, let's go. We're in a hurry and come too, okay? So... Instead of dawdling around, we're just going to go home or go see if we can find any items before we start the adventure, just because items are going to be really, really useful. Just want to see if any of these guys will give us a potion or anything early in the game to help us out. Um, I'm just going to try and talk to some of these people to see if they're going to give me anything. It was pretty much a shot in the dark to see if they'd give us any items, but I don't think they actually will, which kind of sucks. Um, because usually that's how you get most of your items is when you go into the houses and stuff and ask random strangers for their things and then they give things to you, which is pretty awesome. So um, we're going to continue on our adventure and go to Route 1. Lauren is this way. Bianca says if we're starting a journey together, she wants us all to take our first steps at the same time. Hey Lauren, well, let's all take our first steps at the same time and Route 1 together. Okay, here we go. One two and that is our first ever um little thing telling us that we're on a new route which means we're going to be able to after we've gone through this tutorial from professor juniper have our first encounter i really hope it's not a legendary i really hope it's something we can catch without losing our hand door because after she's gonna um tell us all about how the pokedex automatically updates whenever you find a pokemon and all that kind of stuff she's going to show us how to catch one and one second she shows us how to catch one she's going to give us the balls which will mean the lock has officially begun so she's going to give us a little tutorial here that you've all obviously seen um she's going to send out a minchino and try and show us how to catch this pat rat which she obviously must hack for days because she's going to use a stab pound on her minchino that's level seven on a level two and it's not going to kill it not only that, and she's just going to throw one Pokeball at it and catch it straight away. So she's obviously a dirty, dirty hacker. 
will have all of their energy are difficult to catch. If you can, use the Pokemon's moves to make the Pokemon you want to catch fall asleep or paralyze it. And to wrap it up, the best way I have a gift for you, some Pokeballs. So that means the Nuzlocke has officially begun and if we die now, that is going to be the end of the run, which is going to suck. So hopefully we can continue on and not get killed from our first encounter. So um, she's going to tell us about going to Accumula Town and um, we're going to get harassed some more by Sharon. She forgot to say the Pokemon jump out at you in the tall grass. Alright Sharon, you think you can do a job better? I think I'll go too. I'm looking forward to the next town so I can go shopping for Pokeballs. Yay, shopping! Wait a minute. Hey, listen, Lauren, Sharon, I thought of something fun. But we need to get going. I'd imagine the professor is waiting too. Would you just listen a sec? Seriously. Why don't we just see who can catch the most Pokemon? The first Pokemon carrying the most Pokemon, including the one from Professor Juniper, is the winner. Huh, actually, that sounds interesting. It will fill up the Pokedex pages, so I'm sure it will please the professor too. Okay then, until we reach Accumula Time, take care of healing your Pokemon at your own house. Me and Snivy will do the best for sure. Snivy? What's Snivy? You have a Cacnea now. So we are going to take our first ever steps into the grass. And um, I'm pretty nervous about this one. If you want to put in the comment section below the Pokemon that you think we may encounter, then go ahead because that would be pretty awesome to see if you guys can um, pick the one that we're going to get. So I'm just going to quickly save and stop recording here and start re-recording, which is why I'm standing in the same spot for ages. And... Um, we're going to go and have our first encounter. I'm really, really excited about this. So we're going to step one toe in the grass and see what we get. I hope you guys guessed correctly. And our first encounter is going to be a Chandelure, which is pretty cool because that's um, a fully evolved Pokemon. And it's also a type, well, it's got a part of a type that we don't already have, which is Ghost. But unfortunately, it's still going to be a Fire type. So it's going to go for Shadow Force, which is annoying because it's going to be outspeeding us, even though it's level 3 and um, it's going to always be going for the shadow forces dodging my attacks so I'm going to have to keep going for a flame burst in between um, it going for an attack and hiding which is kind of annoying because you can't throw a pokeball at it while it's hidden either so I'm going to keep going for flame bursts and um, try and just whittle its HP down a little tiny bit and not crit it it's actually going to show us that it's got wood hammer which is going to be really really good against Carvana when we actually have to this against um, Sharon again so I really 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 need to catch this thing otherwise we'll probably get um, totally annihilated by Sharon's Carvana like we did at the start so I'm gonna try and throw a Pokeball at it pretty soon I'm thinking because um, I don't want to take too many more attacks I'm just gonna go for one more flame burst just to see if we can get it down anymore but I'm pretty scared that if it spams Woodhammer too many times it may actually just kill itself from recoil even though we're not taking too much recoil damage. So I'm going to attempt to try and throw a ball at it while it's not here, while it's like hidden, but it does actually say you can't actually aim at a Pokemon, which is going to be really unfortunate because that means Handle's going to have to be taking a lot of damage as we're trying to catch this thing, and Handle has no way of healing itself, which is pretty lame. If only it could have got like, you know, refresh, not refresh, um, recover instead of aromatherapy. So. I think it's pretty much time to start throwing balls at this thing. I really, really, really hope we could catch it because it would be, again, very useful. Although we're going to be super, super weak to Sharon's um, Carvana, who's got both Water Gun and Razor Shell, so it's going to be pretty tough to beat. But it does have, like I say, the, um, the Wood Hammer, so we do really, really need to catch this thing, and I'm just holding on for hope that we can. I have no potions or anything, so this is pretty much the last ball I can afford to throw before it starts taking out my Houndor, and we don't want that. So it's going to roll once, it's going to roll twice, it's going to roll three times, a lady, and we are actually going to catch ourselves The Chandelure. It's going to be the first Pokemon we're going to catch, and we already have two members of our team already to start this Nuzlocke with. It absorbs a spirit, which it then burns by waving the flames on its arms. It puts its foes into, into a hypotonic trance. So it's a luring Pokemon, and it's obviously a primary ghost, secondary fire type. And um, I hadn't really ever predicted to run into a Chandelure, but I did already think of a good name for it. Um, the Chandelure on my competitive teams is called Last Light, and I was pretty sure that was a good idea for this guy too, or this girl. Um, so we're going to go ahead and call her Last Light, because it's going to be the last light you'll ever see. Hopefully she doesn't snuff out like a light, because um, that would be pretty lame. So we're going to go home and heal up our newly caught poke, 
and um, I'm going to do some grinding after this. I'll probably fast forward through it as much as I can. This episode is already 20 minutes long, so I don't want to make it too much longer because you guys might get bored. I don't really know how long you want these episodes, um, but I don't want to do anything off camera in case you guys are thinking I'm cheating or whatnot, so I'm trying to like save and start and stitch them together. Um, without moving or anything so you guys don't think I've cheated because I haven't so if it stops and starts like a few seconds later it's because I've been splitting up the sections of um, my recording because I can only record for like five minutes before my emulator starts to get really really unbelievably laggy so um, I'm gonna lead out with blue star against this C dot here and um, just kind of wanted to see what other Pokemon we could have had as a first encounter and uh, get a little bit of XP so we're gonna easily take out that C dot there and um, gain some XP but we're not quite um, at a point to level up yet so I think now is the time to just see what ability our chandelier has got because we've got to do that we are rocking a timid nature which is going to be absolutely perfect against um, Sharon's Carvana and we are rocking ability um, our ability is going to be compound eyes which is slightly unusual um, can't really complain but um, we haven't got any moves that have low accuracy, I don't think, so we're pretty okay. We've got Nightshade, um, Nightmare, Shadow Force, and Woodhammer. Woodhammer is going to be pretty useful, except our nature is actually going to be taking from our physical attack, and our two main attacks are both physical, which is pretty sucky, really. But um, here I'm just going to start um, trying to level this guy up and level up Houndor. We want to get a pretty decent level going on. So after some intense leveling, we're going to go home and heal up our Pokemon, and um, that's going to be pretty much the end of that little session where I was trying to grind for levels as much as I could. Both of my Pokemon are now level 9, and uh, I'm pretty sure we're ready to continue on level 9 versus level 3s in the wild. is going to be pretty good, even if we do run into something that's a legendary. Um, so I think it's pretty much time to continue on our adventure. I'm just going to talk to this guy, hoping he was going to give me a potion or something, but he's just going to chat some stuff about Pokemon being in tall grass. And I'm pretty sure this one lurking in the grass is going to give us a potion, so I'm just going to talk to her. And uh, she's talking about HP, I think she is actually going to give us a potion, which is going to be really useful. You can never have too many potions this early in a Nuzlocke, we do not want to lose our starter or our chandelier. I was pretty scared that Sharon was going to challenge us here and there, but um, she's actually not. How about Lauren? Do you want to compare it with one of us? Which one of us has the most Pokemon with them? It seems the number of Pokemon Lauren has is two. Oh, well, we have the same number then. Incidentally, if you check your Pokedex, you'll see how many Pokemon you found and how many you've caught. I'm off to Accumulatown. The professor is waiting. 
So the professor's actually going to ring us up. And we're going to pick up the phone. Hello, how is everybody doing? You and your Pokemon are getting along great now, right? Oh, professor. Right now, I'm trying to... F I'm in front of Accumulator Times Pokemon Center. I'd like to show you around, so hurry over, everyone. Okay, the Pokemon Center, right. Okay, see you. So that is the end of that super short f phone call. Sharon's going to go off ahead, and we are just going to follow suit. And, um... Go and see Professor Juniper up here. She's just going to give us a tutorial on um, traveling with our Pokemon. It's truly one of the joys of life. Please follow me. I'd like to show you around the most important parts. So she's just going to show us um, how to heal our Pokemon, I think, and just how to use the PC and all sorts. So I'm pretty sure I'm just going to speed through all this because no one really wants to see any of it. And um, we're going to end up chatting along. So, sped through all that, and Bianca, ooh, what should I buy? Potions and Pokeballs are definitely important. Hmm, thinking. So she can't decide what she wants to buy. Whatever, I can. I'm gonna go for as many Pokeballs and Potions as I can get my mitts on. So if we buy, um, five Pokeball, five Pokeballs? Five Potions and ten Pokeballs, that is gonna be all of our money, which is awesome, and we're gonna get that free Prima Ball as well. So we're just gonna go ahead and buy, um, ten Pokeballs. So that is gonna be all of our money. We're gonna have diddly squit left. I hope we don't have any bills to pay or anything like that. So we're gonna fill up our items case, and we're gonna get the Prima Ball as an added bonus. Um, we'll have to ha wait for a very special encounter to catch that Prima, to catch in that Prima Ball. Um, just for, I don't know, the sake of it. <gasps> Imagine if we run into a shiny. If we run into a shiny, I'm catching it no matter what. I won't use it, but I'm catching it. So some stuff's going on, and we're gonna go and see what is current. Lauren, come here a sec. My name is Jutus. I'm here representing Team Plasma. Today, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to talk to you about Pokemon Liberation. Huh? What? This guy's crazy. I'm sure most of you believe that we humans and Pokemon are partners that have come to live together because we want and need each other. However, is this really the truth? Have you ever considered that perhaps we humans only assume that this is the truth? Pokemon are subject to the selfish commands of traders. They get pushed around, and when they are partners at work, can anybody say with confidence that there's no truth in what I'm saying? Yikes, no way. Uh, I don't know. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Pokemon are different from humans. They are living beings that contain certain potential. They are living beings from whom we humans have much to learn. Tell me, what is our responsibility towards these wonderful beings called Pokemon? What could it be? Liberation? That's right. We must liberate the Pokemon. Then and only then will humans and Pokemon truly be equals. Everyone, I end my words here today by imploring me to consider the relationship between people and Pokemon, and the correct way to proceed. We sincerely appreciate your attention. Boom, and they are gonna go off in formation, just how you would if you've got swag coming out of your ears like this dude has. About the speech, what do you think we all should do? <laughs> that's my best old man voice. <laughs> Liberate Pokemon, that's not even possible. Your Pokemon. Now just, I was, it was saying, slow down, you talk too fast. And what's this about Pokemon talking? Is that an odd, that's an odd thing to say. Yes, they're talking. Oh, you two can't hear it either. How sad. My name is N. My name is Sharon, and this is Lauren. We were asked to complete the Pokedex, and we just left on our journey. My main goal is to become the champion, though. So you're going to confine many, many Pokemon into to small Pokeballs for that, then. I'm a trainer, too, but I can't help wondering. Are Pokemon really happy that way? Well, Lauren, is it? Let me hear the 
your Pokemon's voice again. So we're gonna get challenged by N right here, right now, and his Pokemon's gonna be randomized, so we're gonna see what he's gonna have. He's actually gonna have a Banette, which is, uh, well, it would be good for us if Houndor actually had a dark type move, which it doesn't, well, apart from Switcheroo. So, um, but fortunately enough, we did actually pick up Blue Flare um, when we leveled up, so I'm just gonna go straight out and use that with no mercy. I hope it doesn't miss, just to speed things up a bit and easily take out that thing. So that is going to be the end of the Banette, and we will see you later. It was a pretty good job that we leveled up because that would have possibly been a difficult battle if we hadn't done some grinding. So we're actually going to pop up to level 10, which is good. Unfortunately, we don't pick up any new moves, um, so that's kind of sucky. We're just going to defeat N, and he's going to give us 700 pounds, so yay, we're not skinned anymore. Um, as long as Pokemon are confined in Pokeballs, our Pokemon will never become perfect beings. I have to change the world for Pokemon, because they are my friends. I really like the design on N, and is really, really cool. Huh, strange guy. But I'm not gonna worry about it. Trainers and Pokemon help each other out. Listen, I'm going on ahead. I want to battle the gym leader in the next town, Satron City. I aim to battle gym leader after gym leader. The best way for a trainer. To become stronger. It is a challenge. So we're just going to head on and chat to this person, see if she's going to give us anything cool. Fortunately not. And um, we're just going to go ahead and make our way into the next part of the game, into the next part of the map, and hopefully get another encounter so we can catch another Pokemon. And then I'm probably going to wrap up the episodes pretty soon because, um, like I said, I don't want to make them too long because you guys probably want to watch something that's incredibly long. So we're going to head up. It's going to be Route 2. And we're going to get another phone call from our bitches. So we're going to pick up the... I'm trying to see what, it's actually going to be my mom saying, Lauren, it's your mom. How are things? Are you and your Pokemon getting along and enjoying your journey so far? I needed to talk to you, so I called. But I'm going to hang up. So that's pretty pointless. I think she's just distracting us. And then boom, she appears behind us. So she's going to give us the running shoes. And she's pretty much just going to tell us how to use the running shoes. Blah, 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 blah. We can go places in a flash. Something to do with holding B. We all know this kind of spiel, so yes mum, okay, goodbye, please go home, I don't want to listen to you, I want to go and be an awesome Pokemon trainer, goodbye. So now we've got rid of her and we've got our running shoes, we're going to be able to run around in this grass, just have a chat to this girl, see if she hands us anything cool, but she doesn't. So our first encounter is going to be an Emolga, which I was pretty chuffed about, like, it's pretty cute, it's not exactly a hideous Pokemon that I wouldn't like. So we're going to try our best to grab this thing and um, catch this thing. So I'm really wondering what ability this has. It doesn't have like drought or drizzle or anything like that because we would have seen it. So it's probably got another ability. Um, I'm actually going to go maybe into the last light here. I'm not really sure what the best um, Pokemon to attack this thing with is. Last light is slightly lower level so I'm going to swap out and go into her. Um, just because she's got Nightshade so we can do a set amount of HP damage instead of killing this thing. Um, it's going to go for an Electro Ball on us, which isn't going to do too much because we are timid and we are faster than it. So we're able to go for a Nightshade, which is going to do 9 damage to this thing. Um, so it's pretty good having Nightshade on this thing for catching Pokemon, at least. But this thing is going to have Brave Bird. I was really scared that it might have done a bit more than that. It's going to take a little recoil damage as well, which is quite helpful um, for catching it. But hopefully it won't kill itself before we have a chance to catch it. So we're going to throw a Pokeball now, really hoping we can get it as a maybe a critical catch or a first catch. Um, it's going to roll once, roll twice, roll three times, and we're actually going to catch it on the first ball, which I couldn't remember actually happening. I thought it took longer than that, but boom, we have ourselves an Emolga, and uh, it's got Brave Bird, which is going to be awesome source. So we do not have to worry about any fighting types or anything like that, and because it's an electric type, Sharon's Carvana is looking hella a lot less scary. So I'm going to nickname this thing. I wasn't really sure what to call it. Um, I kind of wanted to call it D's Nuts, but it's a girl, so she wouldn't really have nuts. Well, she's a squirrel. So, um, but I'm actually going to go ahead and call her, um, hmm, what am I going to call her? I think I'm going to call her Nutsy, because that's kind of a cute name. So, um, I was kind of, I'm in an iron about what to call her, but, um, 
we do end up calling her Nutsy. So we've got Nutsy, Last Light and Blue Star so far, which is half of our um, team already. So we're looking pretty solid for this playthrough and I'm really, really excited to do the next few episodes. Hopefully I can actually live record those ones instead of having to re-narrate over everything. Like I said, it's not as surprising or exciting because this isn't my true reaction. And my real reactions were a lot better than um, doing it over again. So we're actually gonna go back into the grass just to see what else we could have um, potentially caught but I'm thinking of going back and healing up um, Nutsy before we do but before we do anything we're gonna have to see what our little dude's ability is and possible other movesets so um, it's actually got an item so we're gonna take that item off I was assuming it to have pickup but um, it actually ends up not having pickup at all it's got a bold nature and it's actually got limber which might be kind of useful because I think you can't get um, electric types are susceptible to T-wave and stuff like that in Gen 5, I think. It was only a Gen 6 thing where they changed it. So it can still be pretty useful. So um, it could have been worse, I guess. So we're gonna go off and um, just go back to the Pokemon Center to heal up our Nutsy, our newly caught Flying Squirrel, and um, we're possibly going to buy some more um, potions because you can never have too many potions. I'm actually really terrified of running into something that's going to kill um, Blue and um, take all of the potions that we can. When you think about it, potions are actually extremely expensive. So if potions are like 200 pounds just for a potion, which does like, what, 15 HP or something really small, then imagine all the money that poke centers could make if you had to pay for those. And we're gonna have another encounter in this crash, which is gonna be freaking Zapdos. Why on earth couldn't that be our encounter before? I have no idea, it kind of really sucks. I thought we were doing a good job with the Molga, but then Zapdos goes and appears, losing one. And we're gonna actually manage to snag ourselves a star piece, which is awesome because you can sell that for quite a bit of money and that's gonna become a new, really useful. So we're just gonna have one more encounter. It's gonna be a gosh darn Salamence. Why on earth can we have had that? That would have been really useful as well because it's going to be flying type and dragon type. However, Nazi's electric typing would be pretty useful. It's pretty low level. We're going to have to start leveling that guy pretty soon. We're going to have a first trainer battle. Here we go. This guy means business. He's got his hat on backwards. A trainer catches another trainer's eye. That's it. It's time for a battle. So he's going to give us a battle here. The battle backgrounds are pretty dismal, aren't they, in black and white? It's kind of shameful. They could have put a hell of a lot more effort in than they did. It's slightly animated, but it's really not that great. So he's going to have a Mankey, and um, I kind of really wanted to level up Nutsy here, but I didn't want to swap it in on level 7 Mankey since Nutsy's only level 4. It's pretty pitiful. So we're just going to go for a um, Flame Burst on this Mankey and easily, I'm pretty sure, one-shot this thing. We do score a crit. That may possibly have mattered, actually. And um, we're going to get a little bit more of XP, but not enough to take us to level 11, which kind of... Mm, not so great so we're just gonna swap around I'm gonna put Nutsy up in front just so um, Nutsy can get some more XP from the next battle that we go into um, I'm also I think I'm gonna give Nutsy the smoke ball on the off chance we end up running into a wild Salamence or something or um, I don't know just anything can probably KO Nutsy it is level 4 so I decided to put the smoke ball on that just to be safe I mean it's better to be safe and sorry when every faint means you lose that Pokemon forever um, we're gonna go have a chat to this guy. I was hoping he'd give me something, but he's actually just gonna tell me that you can jump over a ledge and stuff. Um, he's not actually gonna tell you that you can't go back up the ledge the other way either. So he's trying to lure me into a full sense of security there. So I was not gonna buy any of that. I was gonna talk to this guy, but um, he's just telling me that it's safe to walk on the roads if your Pokemon are, have no energy to fight. Which hopefully won't happen to us. And she is going to say her Pokemon are very cute and she's gonna um, challenge us to a battle. Her Pokemon is not cute, she has a ninjask. I don't know what girl in this world would say a bug was cute. I mean, I'm not kind of a girly girl, so I don't mind bugs, but I don't think a kid girl would be like, hey, look at my cute bug type. So um, I was kind of tempted to go for a brave bird, but I really didn't know what this thing had. I mean, it could have anything. It could even have stone edge or something like that. So I'm really terrified of fighting this thing. It's always better to be safe than sorry. I don't want to swap anyone into a stone edge, but I have absolutely no choice. So um, I'm kind of going to have to make a swap at some point or another. My best bet is going to handle because it's my highest level Pokemon. Even though I do ha not have my multi-scale up and running. Um, it's only going to go for a spider web, so we've got pretty lucky there. Like I say, that thing could have anything. Ancient power, earthquake, 
all sorts. It could have all sorts. It's gonna go for a nasty plot, which is perfect because it is actually outspeeding us, even though we are level 10, which is quite disappointing. I mean, it's not very good for behind us. So we're gonna go for a um, flame booster and easily take it out and get a little bit more H uh, HP, a little more XP, and finally get Snag the level 11, which makes him the highest level bug on our team so far. Um, so we're going to take some money from that little girl and run away from her scary, scary, nasty, bloody ninja. So we're going to go into this grass here. We're going to run into an, um, a Selgor, which I always used to think this thing was ghost bug type. Kyle always told me it was ghost bug type, and I just believed him. It, it, it isn't. It's lies. It's all lies. They're not even square. Um, so this guy's going to say, Lily but Lily but here we go. And I'm pretty sure he does not have a lily pup, he's going to have something else. And he's actually going to be having an Umbreon, which is awesome. I really hope we can get a wild Umbreon to catch. Um, so we're going to send in a Mogga, and uh, I was like, mm, with level 7 and 7, I don't really know if I want to risk it. Um, maybe I should swap out into Chandelure, but then I was like, oh, I might have a dark type move. So the best swap, the most safest swap is going to be Handor. I mean, this thing can't really hit me with much at all. Um, so we're gonna swap in and I'm actually gonna swap straight on into a fucking water spout if you had my live reaction I was like holy shit we almost lost Houndor seconds after fucking being in this goddamn Nuzlocke we almost lost our starter already we're gonna just tank it on four health I'm pretty sure um, I was not expecting that in the slightest I mean I know it's randomized but I did randomize I went like you have different levels of randomizing so I kind of randomized it to be like any move but kind of makes sense but a number on water spike does not make sense so he's gonna start setting up home claws and I'm just like oh my god what if this thing has something else something more scary so um I'm gonna try and go for an electro ball because I'm like oh I'd probably outspeed this thing Umbreon's really slow and uh, we may be able to get a nice bit of damage off uh, possibly paralyze it by something like that and uh, it's absolutely gonna do fuck all and it starts home closing again and um it's really, really, really scary. I was expecting it to whack out some kind of physical move and easily one-shot my whole team after this. Um, so I'm just gonna go for Brave Bird. Even if Amorga dies to recoil, at least I won't lose my whole team. Um, just gonna go for another home clause. This is all super, super, super scary and um, I'm hoping I'm just gonna be able to outspeed this thing and go for another Brave Bird. Really hoping that I wouldn't die to recoil or anything like that. Um, I'm looking pretty safe though, I'm going to be able to take out the Umbreon and um, Nutsy is going to survive the recoil. So I'm not even sure if, if Pokemon dies to recoil on a Nuzlocke, yeah, it has to die as well, doesn't it? I'm pretty sure. So we're going to gain, I think we just gained a level then, I wasn't looking at the screen, but we're going to take £112 from that dude and um, continue on our journey. I can't believe that that Umbreon had water spout. That's really, really, honestly the most scariest thing ever. I'm just gonna um, heal up some potions because I don't like the fact that two of my Pokemon are very, very low health. So um, I'm gonna go and give them some potions. Unfortunately on X, you can't, on X, on black, it's not like X and Y, you can't just like pick a Pokemon and use an item on it. You have to go back into your bag and use the item from there, which is kind of frustrating. Um, but it will do so we'll just have to heal up our Pokemon and continue on our journey I wasn't sure how far away the town thing was but it's such a good thing that I did actually go and use those potions because we're going to actually be challenged by Bianca who you guys might not think is threatening but her Pokemon are going to be totally randomized remember so she can have anything she could have like Heatran or something crazy so she's gonna challenge us to a battle and we are gonna um, engage in a battle she's gonna struggle yet again to pull her pokeball out of her bag and almost fall over in the process and she's gonna send out Galad which is pretty scary if we hadn't got Nutsy I think we'd have really struggled to kill this thing but unfortunately um, we do have our flying squirrel of death and we're just gonna be able to go straight for a brave bird which is easily gonna take out that thing and that is not going to be a problem, but I was so scared of facing that thing. That thing could have had Stone Edge, Earthquake, anything, absolutely anything, Bulldoze. We could have been screwed. Last Light and Blue Star would not have survived, even with Blue Star's, Blue Star's multi-scale. Without a Dark type move, we wouldn't have been able to do too much at all. And even though Dark is neutral, actually. Last Light could have done something, possibly. Um, so she's going to send out Cacnea, and um, I'm just deciding to stay in here. I was praying the work weighing up the pros and cons and it kind of makes sense to just go for another brave bird take out Cacnea and 
stay in with the Mogger to bump Mogger's level up hopefully to 10, so she'll be the equal level to the other two members of our party, um, which is pretty good for Nuzlocke to have everyone the same levels instead of having one that's really high level. So we're going to gain that XP and we are going to bump up to level 10, which is perfect. We're going to gain the move Thunder Punch as well, which is um, only reinforcing the fact that our Mogger is probably going to end up being physical um, and not special. So Bianca says, woohoo, you are a tough cookie, Lauren. I'm gonna work hard on training my Pokemon so we won't lose anymore. Okay, bye bye. So she is gonna go off and um, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna wrap up the Nuzlocke here and there. Um, like I said, really, really sorry that I had to narrate over this after it all happened and you wouldn't get my real reactions, which is a real shame. But I really, really enjoyed this Nuzlocke so far. I'm just gonna save the game up around here and uh, wrap this episode up. It's pretty long. I'm gonna have to do a lot of clipping and cropping to shorten this baby down. So I hope you guys are um, excited for the next episode because I certainly am. We have um, Nutsy, Last Light, and Blue Star. And um, we've got pretty good team coverage. We've got some crazy movesets, crazy abilities and um, pretty crap natures if I'm honest. So I hope you guys really like this thing. Please leave a like and uh, subscribe if you're not already subscribed and um, I'll see you next time. Bye!